Greetings! This home connection is called Fractions and More Fractions. It's from Unit 3, Module 2, Session 6. Go ahead and start with your name and number. Question number one says, Ethan used an egg carton model to add fractions. Draw eggs in the cartons to show and solve the problem. Then fill in the blanks to show the answer. So it looks like we're going to add one half plus one sixth to get a new answer. So let's do that. Let's cut this in half so that we can mark the number of eggs that would be in one half. Let's cut this into sixths. Blah, blah, blah. Sixths. Wow, that's tough tough to say. And then I'm going to fill in one sixth. We're going to combine all of these over here. So I'm going to take these six eggs and then I'm going to add two from the next to get a new fraction. And there's a couple ways we could do this, but I'm going to try to isolate the biggest units by going like this. Okay, looks like I can divide it into thirds as the bottom number. And then you're going to fill out how many of those thirds are full. So this third here is full, so that's one third. This third is full as well. And this third is empty, so I can't count it. So I have two thirds of an egg carton that is full after I combine both of these. If you wanted to, you could divide it even further. I'm going to use maybe black just to show you. Like you could have divided it into sixths. If you would have done that, you would have had one, two, three, four sixths. That's the alternative. Okay. Uh, you could have also said that you had how many out of 12? right? Which is 8 out of 12. Regardless, these are all the same fraction, because if I double 2 thirds, I get 4 sixths. If I double that, I get that, right? 2 doubled is 4, 4 doubled is 8, 3 doubled is 6, 6 doubled is 12. Those are all correct answers. Number two, oh goodness, this is a tough one. And I, I really hope you take a little bit of time on this. We can place these fractions on this number line first off by figuring out whether they go are higher than one or less than one. Okay, that's going to be really important. And I might be able to help out just a little bit by zooming in a pinch. But we have zero, we have one, we have two. I have marks in between. Those are probably halfway marks. So why don't we even just start there? Do I, do I have one half? I do right there. I have one half. Okay. Do I have one and a half somewhere? Let's look at our choices. Oh, I do have one and a half. One and one half. So those are good. Get rid of the half. Get rid of the one and a half. And then you're going to have to figure out what's smaller than a half, what's larger than a half. And there's one even further than that. And then what's larger than one and what's larger than one and a half. So I know that these two are going to be on the right side. I have to figure out which one is larger, one and three-fourths or one and one-fourth. Well, we know that if we wanted to represent one and one-fourth, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all four pieces of this one. This represents one. And then if I do one-fourth here, that represents one and one-fourth. If I'm going to do 1 and 3 fourths, it's going to look like that. So 1 and 3 fourths is larger, which is why I would put that here, and I would put 1 and 1 fourth right here. We can also remember that just the way that we divide up like a unit, it always goes 1, like the whole number, a quarter, a half, three quarters, and then the next whole number if you're counting by fourths. Okay. So when you come down here, though, the options that we have left are one-fourth, three-fifths, and seven-eighths. Wow! That can be really complicated. Well, let's figure out only one of those numbers is smaller than one-half. In order for it to be smaller than one-half, the bottom number has to be larger than two. Well, that's all of them. Okay, and then we're going to probably want the smallest numerator 
well, looks like one and three are pretty small numbers. So I might have to figure out, is one-fourth or three-fifths larger? Well, a couple ways we could figure that out, but we're just going to use our model from over here. Halfway in between the one and the half was a quarter. Halfway in between zero and a half is going to be one-fourth. So we can count that one done. When it comes to three-fifths and seven-eighths, we can make some guesses that are pretty accurate. And this is what I would say. If we write them side by side, let's say I'm going to write three-fifths and I'm going to write seven-eighths, just so I can see the number. I have almost all of eight pieces, and I have s almost half, a little bit more than half of five pieces. Well, a little bit more than half would put me here. Almost one, almost eight out of eight, would put me here. So we can make some good guesstimates about these numbers just by wrestling them with them, wrestling with them in a way that would tell us, am I close to half? Am I close to one? Okay? This is a very tough one, but I would highly suggest you take a really good look at it. And if you have the option to write this out on a different piece of paper and practice it without my help, that would be a huge benefit for learning your fractions. Let me back up. Maria is writing as many different addition and multiplication equa equations as she can for two and two eighths. Her rule is that all the fractions in each equation must have a denominator of eight. Here are the equations Maria has written so far. Fill in the bubble beside each equation. That is true. The fractions in each equation must have a denominator of 8. So all of the fractions must have a denominator of 8. So if you look at the number 1, that's a whole number. So we don't have to have a denominator of 8. So I have 2 and 2 eighths. 1 is fine. 1 is fine. I have 2 eighths. So that looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. We could we're going to put a bubble in that one. That one's true. I'm also going to look at the next one. 2 and 2 eighths, 8 eighths plus 10 eighths. Are we also good here? Do, are all of the denom de denominators 8? Yes, they are. I'm going to also ask you to take a look at this one and figure out are all of the denominators 8? Okay, that's fine. And then 18 times 1 eighth equals 2 and 2 eighths. Are all of the appropriate denominators 8? Yes, they are. Now, we must figure out which equations are true. So we know that they all fit this um, requirement, that they have to have denominators of 8. Great. Do all of these add up to 2 and 2 eighths? 2 and 2 eighths. 1 plus 1 plus 2 eighths is 2 and 2 eighths, so that's fine. 8 eighths is 1, 10 eighths is 1 and 2 eighths, that gives us 2 and 2 eighths, so this one is good as well. It's good, good. 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 5 eighths plus 14 eighths is 19 eighths. Just had to double check my math there. That can be converted to 2 and 3 eighths. <gasps> uh oh, spaghetti -o. That is not an option. Shame on them. Now let's take a look at this one. 18 times 1 eighth is 18 eighths. That is the same as 2 and 2 eighths. Ah, so once again, we're good. So only one of these was a naughty problem that we could not use. The other three were fine. This is where you get to have a little bit of fun on your own, at least for a little bit. It says, write at least four more addition or multiplication equations for 2 and 2 eighths in which all of the fractions have a denominator of 8. Now, really, if, if you know that 18 eighths 
is 2 and 2 eighths, if you know that these are that's true, then all you have to do is come up with numbers that add up to 18. So I could say 10 eighths plus 8 eighths equals 2 and 2 eighths. What if I break up? What if I say 5 eighths plus 5 eighths? That would mean be breaking up the 10 eighths plus 8 eighths equals 2 and 2 eighths, so that's true. I could break up that 4 even further, so I could say 5 eighths plus 5 eighths, keep that the same, but now break this 8 into 4s. 4 eighths plus 4 eighths equals 2 and 2 eighths. Now, and you can get a lot more creative than this, but the, the, this is just maybe a simple way to break the numbers down that give you 2 and 2 eighths, okay? and I will let you come up with your own there. Make sure you pause this video if you need to, okay? Calvin and Leah are playing a game that has them draw fraction cards to add up to numbers that fill a 12 egg carton. Calvin had one third of his egg carton full when he chose a card with eight twelfths on it. He says he will fill his egg carton. Do you agree or disagree? Why? and you can use a labeled sketch to help you. Well, let's go ahead and split our egg carton into thirds. I'm gonna use two strings or two lines. If, you're, if you did this in class with strings, that's kind of what this represents, where I have one third, one third, and one third. Calvin says that he, has one, that he had one third of it full when he started. He drew a card that said eight twelfths. Well, if we then, I'm going to change colors and get do 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is the egg carton full? Yes, it is. So I can label this as um, blue is 8 twelfths. Red is 1 third. So that tells me, I'll write this in black, that 1 third plus 8 twelfths equals 1 full carton. Okay? Now this one, not, not terrible, not terrible, because that one adds up pretty well. I'm going to walk you through this one, but I'm going to let you solve it, okay? Leah had four-sixths of her egg carton full when she chose the five-twelfths card. She can fit five-twelfths in this egg. Can she fit five-twelfths in the egg carton? Well, let's do this thing. So four-sixths. So I'm going to I'm going to lay the five strings on here to divide my egg carton into six pieces, okay? So each of these sets of two represents one-sixth. Leah had four-sixths full, so there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. She chose a card that said five-twelfths. Can she fit five-twelfths into the remainder of her egg carton? And I'm going to let you draw out and explain your answer for why or why not. Pause this video if you need to. Imagine you are playing the game with egg cartons that holds 18 eggs, and the fraction cards refer to 18 eggs instead of 12 eggs. For example, if you draw the one-half card, that means half of 18 and not half of 12. Okay? Now, um, when we do egg cartons like that at my house, because we have chickens, uh, and if we ever have the, um, how do you want to say it? Let's see. I'm trying to I'm trying to draw this while speaking. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we split here, and then we split here. Okay, there's there's a, a carton of eighteen. That's kind of what it looks like. And you can buy them at the store, so maybe you've seen a carton that holds 18. There's three rows of six, okay? The question says, if you have two-thirds... Sorry, my alarm went off. If you have two-thirds of your 18 egg carton full... Start, let's start right there. Two-thirds. So I'm going to use my... Let's use my black pen here to split this up into thirds. So that means I'm going to put a rope there and a rope there. That means these six is one-third. This middle section of six eggs is two, one-third. 
and this is one third. So I have three equal groups. Okay, so I just split this carton into thirds. If you have two thirds of it full, well, can we mark it two thirds full? So if I put six eggs in here, that's one third. If I put six eggs in here, that's two thirds. If I have two thirds of my carton full, how many more eggs will fit in that carton? Do you think you can find the answer? Okay. What fraction card will you need to draw to fill this carton? Well, to answer that, we need to say that number one, to fill the rest of this carton, I would need one, two, three, four, five, six eggs, right? So I would need six eggs to fill it. What fraction card would this be? How much is left? One of the three groups. So that's one of the three groups, one third. That would be the that would be the card that I would need to draw to fill in the rest of this carton. Okay, uh, I am going to draw my egg carton again. Hopefully, it looks as nice as the last one because I didn't think that was too bad. Okay, that's okay. You have one third of the egg carton full. Okay, so let's split this up. Let's do this in um, thirds again. So I'm going to change this to black. I'm going to lay a string there. I'm going to lay a string there. You double check to make sure these are thirds. Six, six, and six. Yep, that's thirds. One third of it's full when you draw a card. So let's fill in one third. That much of the carton is full. And you select the five six card. Can you use this card to place more eggs in the second carton? Or will you have to use your third carton instead? So now I have to break this up into sixths in order for this to make sense. So I'm going to split this up into sixths now. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, six groups. If you look at columns, group one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Okay? Five sixths is the card that you draw. So this would be one, two, three, four sixths. There's not enough room here. Can you use this card to place more eggs in the second carton? Or will you have to use your third carton instead? I'm just giving you a little time to think about this. Can you use this card, the 5 6, to place more eggs in the second carton? Or will you have to use your third carton instead? And hopefully you figured out since there's only 4 6 available, you're going to have to use a different carton to hold 5 6. Okay? There's just not enough room. Okay? Whew. This was a tough lesson, but thanks for digging in. If you have questions, make sure you ask a grown-up. Um, and I didn't write that answer in there. I'm hoping you'll put that in in your own words, just like several of the others where I did not give you the answer. So uh, put in those answers where we didn't uh, put them in. Make sure you ask for help if you need it. We love to answer questions. Check you later.